All right, our sequence is coming along pretty well. As you can see, I've made a few more edits since the point we were at in the last movie. And we're in pretty good shape, but I think there are a few shots that I need to move around. And I also really think I need to create some space between some of the shots so we can let the sequence breathe a little bit. So let's take a look at how to do both of those. First, let's focus on creating space. Just to remind ourselves, the structure of this is that Jack here is talking about craftsmanship, and then here, quality, and then here, community. So let's just put a small gap in between each of these sections. One way to move clips is to simply lasso them, and then you can just drag like so. Notice by default, it sort of leaps forward in very large movements. Now there's a couple of ways that I can make that a little bit of a finer control. First, I can just zoom in. So if I zoom in here, I am able to have finer control. Notice that it does snap to my playhead, it does snap to edit points. If I want to exercise fine control and not have this snapping, I'm going to turn off snapping. And snapping is right here, where the S key on the keyboard. So if I turn off snapping by pressing S, notice that now there really is no magnetism to any point in the timeline. I'm able to freely move this. Also notice that as I move the clip, I get an indication of how much it's moving. So let's keep track about how far we are moving this. I'll go flush up against this clip again. I'll turn snapping on. And now I'll move it and I'll take a look. You can see that I've moved it one second and I've moved it about two seconds. And that's about right. I wanted about two seconds. So I'll drop it right there. And we've created a two second gap. All right, so that's easy enough. Lassoing is fine for just a few clips, but if I have a lot of clips that I'd like to move, there's a different tool that I wanna show you. And that's right here. It's called Track Select Forward, and that's the A key on the keyboard. All right, so I'll press A, and then here's where I wanna create my second gap. And I'll just zoom in a little bit, and I'll grab onto it. And notice that everything from this point forward is highlighted except for the music and that's because I have that locked and that's for a special reason that I'll show you a little bit later if I did not have the music track locked and I selected this notice that that would be selected as well but I do want to lock the music and we'll go ahead and bring this forward and this time instead of clicking and dragging I want to show you how to nudge all right and I do this with the keyboard all I do is select what I want to move and then I press command right arrow to nudge one frame at a time to the right. That's command left arrow one frame at a time to the left. And if you're on a PC, that's alt left and right arrow. And I can also add shift to that to go five frames at a time. So I'm gonna go command shift right arrow. That'd be alt shift right arrow on a PC. And I'm nudging the entire collection of clips over five frames at a time. And I admit I pressed it so many times that I'm not exactly sure how large this gap is. So let's measure it. I'm going to get back to my selection tool. So I'm going to get off of my track select forward and back to my selection tool keyboard shortcut V. And then all I'm going to do is just measure this gap. And I do that by pressing X. The X command is mark clip. And because I'm in a gap, it treats this as the quote unquote clip that it's measuring. And you can see here that it's three seconds and three frames, which I'm okay with. If I wanted to nudge it back over a tiny bit, all I'd have to do is just press the A key on the keyboard, select all those clips, and I'll just do shift command left arrow maybe two times so that I go backwards 10 frames. And there we go. All right, I'll press V to get my selection tool back. If I want to clear my in and out points, that's Option X or Control Shift X on a PC. And let's create our last gap. Actually, it would be our first gap chronologically. And again, I'm just going to press A and I'll just drag this one. And we'll go forward about two seconds. And there we go. All right, so we've opened up our sequence quite a bit. I'll press V to get my selection tool back and I'll press backslash to zoom to fit. Okay, and we've created our various gaps. Now I'd like to take a look at how to swap shots. And I'm gonna come down here and I've actually color-coded the shots that I would like to swap. I want Kyle to come in right after my gap and then we cut to Jack. So if I wanted to simply extract this and then insert it over here, I can command drag or control drag on a PC. And let me zoom in so I have a little bit finer control. And notice that when I do this, it is going to extract it from this location 
and then insert it at this location. And so I've effectively swapped these two shots. All right, so easy enough. However, when I have items on other tracks that I care about and don't want to move, then this is not the command that I want to use. So let me undo that, Command-Z or Control-Z, and I'm going to unlock my music, all right? I had locked it so that I could effectively hide it from this type of edit, but now let's bring it in action. And now when I Command-Drag or Control-Drag on a PC, watch what happens to my music. All right, as you can see, it created a gap the same length of the clip that I moved. This is not what we want to happen. And so if you do have items on other tracks, you're gonna to wanna to constrain this swap to the tracks that you're actually working with. So again, let me undo that. And if I just want to swap these shots and leave everything else on other tracks alone, I just add one more modifier. And so I press Command and Option, that's Control and Alt on a PC as I drag. And now, the shots are swapped simply on V1 and A1, and then all other items on other tracks are left alone. All right, I'll zoom to fit here, and I think things are coming along nicely. I've added my spaces, I've swapped my shots, but you know what? I think that we still have a little bit too much material. Everything that my interview subjects are saying can be presented more concisely. So in the next movie, we'll talk about the best ways to remove frames from our sequence.